So today, as you just mentioned, I was asked to speak about uh, the revival of the individual. And I decided to do something that I don't normally do in public seminars, which is to talk about my personal journey. Because as it turns out, my personal journey is not so personal after all. In fact, the essential elements that led to my revival turn out to be the essential elements of Islam and the essential elements that are recommended for every believer. So let me share highlights of that journey with you. Alhamdulillah, I've never had any doubts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or about Islam or being Muslim. The idea of the unseen for me was pretty much something I accepted from my childhood. But it was not until my late teens that I began to take this journey of faith very seriously. I was curious to know how this religion that I had been born into would change me and what insight I would gain into life and beyond. The Quran states, O oh, you who believe, reply in the affirmative to Allah and the Prophet when he invites you to what will revive you and know that Allah rounds between a person and his heart and that to him you will all be gathered. I thought, wow, can I really be revived? Am I not already alive? Aren't we all already alive? The truth is, many people are just living. And that's not the same as being alive. To be alive in the Quranic sense is to see the truth. And when we see the truth, to think and act accordingly. Only Allah has the power to revive us, both in our life and after our death. The question then is, what are we being invited to? How can we access this light, this truth, so that we can be alive and not just merely living? The first step that I decided to undertake seriously, which many of us take for granted, and many of us unfortunately neglect, is prayer, or a salah. The Quran tells us, establish regular prayers five times a day on time. While this is basic, it is also major. Just listen to what the Quran says about prayer and seek assistance through patience and prayer. And it is surely a big challenge, except for the humble. That's in 245. Guard your prayers and the middle prayer and stand up obediently to Allah, 2, 238. And those who hold fast to the book and establish prayer, we do not fail the reward of those who set matters right. It also states, recite what has been revealed to you of the book and establish prayer. Verily, prayer shields from what is indecent and reprehensible. And surely the remembrance of Allah is greatest and Allah knows what you are doing. So, and these are just some, by the way, I, I cannot possibly go through all of the ayat in the Quran uh, for each of the elements that we're going to mention uh, in the next half hour, or we'd be here for quite some time. So I'm highlighting just some of them to show you the significance that the Quran places on these essentials. And not just the Quran, of course, the Sunnah, and our, our faith more broadly. I'm focusing on the Quran because this is the month of Ramadan, and this is the month that we pay tribute and show gratitude for the Quran in particular. So after you've disciplined yourself with these five prayers, I started to add more, especially during the night, the night prayer. And again, the Quran singles out the night prayer as very clear uh, and very peaceful. So the night prayer was very important. And every person's different, and I don't know how long it's going to take you, but Salah, or prayer is so significant, not only in your individual life, but in the collective life of the community. Every community I visit around the world, 
I have one observation. If it is not a community that is getting up to pray together, it is very hard to stay together. It is very hard to do other things together. If we could get communities, families, to wake up and pray together, if we had that obedience, if we had that discipline as an ummah, we would be somewhere very, very different. But today is just about revival of our own selves.